Welcome to On The Couch. This is a regular catch-up where we discuss some of the issues and hopefully solve some of the problems facing marketers today. I'm joined by our agency remuneration and finance expert, Lyndon Brill. Welcome, Lyndon. Hi, Darren. Look, um, one of the things that uh, a lot of marketers will phone us up and ask about is, am I paying my agency too much? So I'm going to start with a simple question. I say that tongue in cheek. How much should I pay my agency if I'm an advertiser? Well, we believe uh, advertisers should pay their agency based on the value that they bring and the uh, what in be rewarded for uh, delivering results and performance to the agency. So this comes from, uh, you know, traditionally it has been more of a, an input-based methodology where uh, you were paying your agency based on a pre-agreed uh, you know, number of resources to deliver a scope of work or outcomes, um, which is based on a cost plus uh, overhead and profit markup uh, methodology. But we're really seeing this move now to an output-based model, which is you know takes the focus off of cost and inputs to the value that the output delivers to the marketer. Because one of the problems with the cost-based model is that it says everything has the same cost if it takes the same number of hours. And in fact, uh, a discussion I had recently with an agency, they saw our output-based model, our pricing matrix, and they couldn't understand why a brand ad and a promotional ad had very different fees attached to it. Um, what could you explain why you would have because they said it takes the same amount of time to make a tv ad whether it's promotional or brand sure well generally uh, we say you should invest heavier in brand and the reason being is that a particular campaign will have a longer life cycle uh, and therefore uh, you know it's generally got a higher media uh, value or budget uh, and therefore you should invest more because of the impact it can have over the business whereas uh, a retail or a direct response campaign will generally only be in market for six to eight weeks, and therefore it's generally supported by a smaller media budget. So obviously, you know, if you're not gonna spend as much uh, on media and it's got a shorter uh, life cycle in the campaign, you probably don't need to spend as much as what you do on a brand campaign, which, you know, you could run for 12 to 24 months, for instance. Because the other trend we're seeing is this move away from retainers, which agencies love, you know, guaranteed cash flow, to project fees. What do you think's driving that uh, trend? Uh, that's been driven by a change in the media landscape, uh, obviously. You know, traditionally, uh, you know, mass media was always a, a large component uh, of media budgets. But I think uh, marketers these days want to be more tactical and responsive, and therefore uh, they're wanting to uh, hold back some of their budget so that they can go to market with uh, whatever comms they see is the most effective at the time to, to really be able to optimise their spend and, uh, you know, be less... Uh, committed uh, financially up front and, and therefore output-based pricing allows this to happen. So, uh, you know, we generally recommend that you have a bit of a hybrid model. So you sort of retain your core resources of maybe account management uh, and, and strategy to cover things like your brand and comms planning as well, but then have an output-based pricing for the, a price to, to deliver a, an asset in a specific channel. So you um, have agency experience, you're a uh, finance director, CFO for a uh, very large agency in the UK. Um, now that working on the Trinity P3 side, you've seen both sides of the uh, discussion, what would you say are the key elements for a great agency remuneration model? Sure, well I guess I've seen both sides, so that's, that's the really important part. I think it's it's important to have very clear objectives uh, and also know the uh, outcomes that the agency or marketer would like from their uh, agency and make sure that they're aligned along the way. So that the agency is focused on delivering uh, performance and results. Uh, so the key thing for a, a good relationship is to have you know a transparent contract agreement with uh, pre-agreed and established uh, financial remuneration, so that you know exactly what. You're paying and the agency knows what they're expected to do. Um, what about uh, the fact that a lot of contracts seem to be either incredibly complex or they're so flimsy that no one bothers using them? Because contracts are fairly essential to establishing the rules of the relationship, aren't they? Sure. 
yeah, it's really important that you understand what's in your contract. And I think these days, you know, too often uh, the contract gets signed and, it, you know, quite often, you know, the media landscape is moving so fast these days. You know, we recommend you really should be reviewing your contract at least every two years, uh, certainly in the media side because it's changing so fast. Um, but I think that's one of the key things uh, in the services that we offer and what I do on a day-to-day is explain the actual contractual terms to the marketer so that they really understand uh, exactly how they are remunerating their agency and also um, you know, how they need to work uh, together with their agency partner to make sure that everybody has a, a clear understanding of the terms and conditions of the agreement. So I want to move on to benchmarking because it's a hot topic when we raise benchmarking with uh, agencies. They often have a lot of questions about where did they come from and how do we know they're relevant. We've got ad cost checker, we've got a lot of benchmarking around the scope monitor that we use. What do you see as the ideal role for benchmarking in agency remuneration? The benchmark allows uh, the market to assess, um, you know, value because it will, it will tell them. Uh, a benchmark will tell you what they're paying compared to other uh, marketers in the same category in the industry in Australia uh, or overseas, for that that matter. Um, you know, benchmarking quite often people think it's just about rates, but uh, it's not just about rates. It's about the efficiency or the number of hours or resources that it takes to deliver a specific output. So. Um, you know, you can't really just look at, you know, is there, or ne- negotiating a low rate card, which sometimes is what procurement thinks important. Mm. Whereas, you know, you've really got to look at the resources that are involved as well. You know, if you pay a higher rate or a premium to the market, as long as you're getting a highly efficient service, that could still mean that you're maintaining good value. So, you know, it's really important to keep that at the back of the mind. The other thing um, from benchmarking is we also like to look at the agency's uh, overhead and profit levels just because we know how efficient they are uh, from a, uh, running a business on a day-to-day perspective and also uh, the level of profit that they expect because obviously um, price allows, you know, that's their market positioning effectively. So if you're paying a premium to the market, hopefully, you know, the agency is delivering services that, that justify the premium. So, you know, that's the key part that we see in benchmarking is that it tells you where, you, where you're paying your agency compared to other uh, you know, competitors or, or businesses in the market. So the concept of reducing uh, everyone down to a benchmark, an average or a mean, uh, is actually counterproductive in many ways. And is that why we use a, a low, medium and high? Sure, yeah, because all agencies are different. So, you know, depending on the size, if they're aligned to a multinational or compared to a, a smaller independent uh, agency, which has a lot less overhead and uh, you know, things like management charges and coordination charges coming out of their model. So we use uh, high, medium and low benchmarks, which is also, you know, it's not just the agency, it's reflective of the client. Obviously, bigger clients will want higher investment levels, which have got, you know, much bigger spends, they've got more at risk. So they'll invest more in a particular campaign or output compared to marketers that have got smaller budgets, uh, which, you know, need to use them wisely. Uh, wisely, a lot of the time, they just need low cost economical work mm. um, and so it's important that you know you don't treat everybody the same so that's the reason why we break our benchmarks down to high medium and low. Now you do probably at a guess I'd say 40 or 50 uh, agency remuneration reviews in, in various shapes and forms. Where is it that you th- see in your work with clients you bring the most value to the equation? You know, obviously, there's, there's a couple of parts to doing a proper uh, remuneration assessment. So obviously, you know, we uh, look at the agency contract first and then look at the way that they remunerate their agency. We obviously then uh, deal with agencies and you know, it's really important these days to make sure that we understand the scope of work and the exact level of complexity that's involved and the resource levels and investment levels that they expect. So we then sort of go away and you know, use our benchmark methodology, write our report, and then what we do is, you know, a lot of the, the value we deliver is actually in the presentation of the report so that the marketer and the, the broader marketing team often understand exactly, you know, the remun- how they're remunerating their agency and the value that their agency is delivering for, for the, the value, the uh, remuneration that they're paying them. Well, look, Lyndon, that's fantastic. Thanks for joining me on the couch. Um, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and 
uh, stay tuned for more on the couch at Trinity P3. Thanks.